this company's never been more profitable. You mean hugely profitable? I like it. Dayporter.com presents The Profitable Cleaner, a podcast on commercial cleaning sales and entrepreneurship. The one podcast that's not afraid to discuss real sales strategies with real cleaning professionals that produce real profits and real results. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Profitable Cleaner Podcast. I'm James Harper, and I am joined by two awesome guests today. I'm so excited to be speaking with these two individuals, not only because they are in the uh, commercial cleaning space, but also because they are husband and wife. I'm going to let them tell a little bit about their um, story, but without any further ado, Alex, Jessica, thank you guys both so much for uh, joining me on today's episode and uh, would love to hear a little bit. Um, I think we should probably start with Jessica. Um, we'll let the uh, ladies go first here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jessica, and the the, the story of, of e, uh, ECS and, and just kind of what you guys do. Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for having us, uh, James. This is a great opportunity to share our story. And I think that, you know, when we are placed in places to share our story, it just gives other people hope that, hey, I could do that too. Right. So, um, so I love what you're doing and being able to echo our message to the world is, is so, is so cool. Such a neat thing to do. Thank you. Of course. So um, again, my name is Jessica Rosario, and uh, I'm uh, one of the owners here at Exclusive Cleaning Services. And prior to that, I spent 25 years in corporate leadership. I was in the banking industry for many, many years. And um, no, I'm not great at finance. <laughs> that was always a, 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 a you know, a, a a rumor, as they say, um, because a lot of people, a lot of people automatically assume that if you're in finance, you're really good with numbers. And I was really good with strategy. That was my thing. I was a regional for many years. I was in corporate leadership. Um, I managed multiple locations. And um, fast forward to 2018, um, Alex came home and was like, you know, we should start a business. And that's basically where it all started. We were sitting down having dinner and we, we were there as a family and our teenage daughters at the time, they were like, what? Start a what? Do what? How? Right? Um, so at that point, I had already been coaching entrepreneurs based on my experience with small business uh, through the banking world. And I said to Alex, well, you know, if you're down for it, I I'm down for it. You know, I don't know anything about a cleaning business, but, you know, I'm sure we could figure it out. And that's that's exactly what we did. And we're here five years strong. I love it. I love it. Alex, I, I kind of know your story a little bit from our, our conversation a few weeks ago, but how, how do you kind of blend into the story? I know that you guys, obviously husband and wife and a, and a business around a kitchen table came to be, but I know my job is to kind of dig a little bit deeper, right? I know that, uh, Alex, you kind of shared about how Jessica's the brains of the business led this, and then you kind of like helped push the idea to come to fruition. Share a little bit of your thoughts there and, and, and a little bit of your story. Correct, correct. James, first I wanna say thank you uh, to you guys for doing what you guys are doing. You guys are incredible. I listen to your podcasts when I'm in the car, when I'm out there needing to have to be out there in, in the field, I listen to you guys. So you guys are doing great things. Thank you, um, man. Yeah, we really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys a bunch. Um, we started, I, I come back from construction, right? Um, I was working um, at a local family owned um, concrete distributor, ready mix concrete distributor um, and uh, family owned business. So I got to see a lot of things as, as they were growing the business, right? And um, Jessica kind of got a little tired of me working 80, 85 hours a week. And she says, we need to make a change. Mm -hmm. And uh, my aunt, who is also in the Orlando area here, she has a cleaning franchise. And I kind of asked her some questions about it. And she goes, well, why don't you just come out and see what we do? And uh, speaking to Jessica about it, Jessica and her previous marriage, they had a cleaning franchise. So I said, um, what do you know about it? And she goes, not really much. We didn't, we didn't last too long in it. So mm -hmm. I ended up meeting with, uh, I guess it would be like a salesperson for the franchise, sat down with him 
and um, I didn't really like what I was hearing, right? So I told Jessica, I said, Let's pr I think we can do this on our own. Let's go after it on our own. Um, so while still working in the concrete, we um, got our business going, got the, the business uh, LLC going and all of that good stuff. And we landed out a, a first call for a walkthrough, which was nerve wracking. And uh, I didn't know how to go about it. So I invited my aunt to come with me to my first walkthrough. And um, we did it, submitted the proposal. And about two or three, late, two or three days, days later, we got a phone call that they're ready to go forward with it. I was like, oh my gosh, we have something here, right? So it was really exciting and nerve wracking and um, not knowing where to start, right? We didn't have any equipment. Um, and uh, it, it was nerve wracking, but I always say um, you, we have to learn to be uncomfortable, right? In order to, to progress, right? And um, that was, a, that was a, a big turning point for us. I was still working my full-time job, um, doing walkthroughs as well. And we landed a second account, which was a lot bigger than the first account. So at that point, I had to make the choice, either stay here working with this company or commit 100% to growing the business. So at that point, I decided to get my two weeks notice and um, decided to give this 100%. And uh, my manager, which was the, um, he was like the, um, like a regional, he came to me, he says, Alex, well, what are you doing? I was done. I was with the company for about seven years at that point. I said, um, we're going to go into janitorial business. He goes, what? You're going to go from this to go scrubbing, cleaning toilets and stuff. I said, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. So he says, okay, how about you give me a, a bid for all the buildings that we have in the local area? And uh, at that time they had uh, six buildings, gave him a bid. And we got a signed contract from there. And it was just like, wow, this was meant to be, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that was in 2018, 20, mm -hmm. going into 2019. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, we're learning as we go for sure. 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 Yeah. I love that. I'm going to pause you guys there because there's a, questions arise when I hear you guys talk. And you guys both talked about two things. Um, you talked about Jessica, you making the jump from like corporate, then all of a sudden starting your own business. And then Alex, you having to leave a full-time job in a different industry, a little bit of similar parallels, right? In the mm -hmm. trades world. I think that's, that's good. I want to start with you, Jessica, mm -hmm. when you, and then obviously it sounds like you had some franchise experience prior a little bit in the cleaning world. What forced you to make that leap? from corporate based on your kind of prior franchise cleaning experience that might have not been as successful mm -hmm. to all of a sudden, like you're sitting at that kitchen table and you're like, we're doing this. Like what, what inspired you to make that leap? And then Alex, after she answers, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, well, Alex quit his job first. Um, we were both making really good money. Um, you know, I, I, I was already in leadership and I had the experience. So it was really hard for me to walk away from a six figure salary, but because it, to me, it was originally Alex's vision of what family meant to him of being able to spend more time with family and having the freedom and flexibility that every entrepreneur desires. He quit first. And one thing that he didn't say was that he walked around with that resignation letter in his email. And we must have changed the date on that. I would say <laughs> at least 10 times. Cause you know, I, uh, I'm, I, you know, Alex is the storyteller, but I'm like the strategic get to the point. Right. And I was like, you better quit. You better tell them you're not working those hours. You better tell them that your family doesn't see you. Right. And all of those things were happening in that process. And then when I stopped nagging, <laughs> One day he texts me and I was in the middle of a meeting. He texted me. He said, I gave my notice. I was like, oh my God, this just got real. Right. So, um, so at that point we knew, we knew that we knew that we had something in our hands that it was going to be hard work, but it was going to get us to that next level. And the funny thing is that, you know, to answer your specific question in regards to the franchise, um, 
I got to see the ins and outs of franchises. And listen, there are plenty of franchises out there that are very successful. Kudos to you, right? But the reality is that when you sign up for the franchise, right, you're, you're basically buying the brand, the structure, the process, and you've got to do everything the way they do it. Otherwise, they strip away that account. You never own the client, right? And granted, we don't own the client as it is, but we do own the relationship. And I think that was a very, very different process. And one of the things that I said to Alex was, and his aunt owns a, a franchise. And, and when we decided to do this, I said, let's go talk to her first and let's see truly how happy she is, you know, with this process. And she, she was so transparent with us. She showed us her financial statements to, to be able to see what they were taking out and for what. And as I went through that list, I remember telling Alex, well, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. Well, you can do that. So that right there was like 30% of the gross revenue, right? So I knew deep down in my heart that I knew we could do this. Was it scary to hear like, this is like deja vu. I'm going into the cleaning industry again. Oh my gosh. Like, no, I'm not doing this. But I think that one of the things that was really helpful for Alex and I was the fact that we both knew what hats we were wearing. And in the, in the very beginning, I think we were bumping heads a lot. But EOS really helped us through that process. Uh, mm. I'm sure you've heard of it with uh, the book totally. traction. And then understanding, okay, well, what are the things that I'm really good at so that I don't resent the business? And then what are the things that Alex is really good at so that he doesn't resent the business? And most importantly, not impact our relationship. So he quit first. And then he cheered me on for a year. And then I quit. <laughs> I quit in December of 2019. So he, But he was able to quit first. I love it. Alex, I know I said I want you to answer, but a few questions have came out of that that I just need to ask. Well, well, it's hot right here. All right. I want to I want to dive in as, as deep as you guys will allow me to go uh, with like the dynamic of being husband, wife. Uh, you guys both wear uh, different hats, which mm -hmm. helps the business. But you talked about bumping your heads. And so I want to give some background mm -hmm. real fast in 30 seconds. I don't care who answers. How would you guys meet? Uh, how'd you, like, I want to know the backstory. How'd you guys meet? You guys have, it sounds like you guys have kids, kids with each other, kids with others. Like, I want to know kind of the family blend because that plays a big role into how businesses develop. And there's a lot of people listening to this show right now that are in business with their partner mm -hmm. and they have kids, they have prior relationships and it can be complicated and can also be beautiful. So mm -hmm. give me like the, the minute backstory. How'd you guys meet? Where? Where, who are the kids? How are they involved? And then I want to talk about the dynamic of being husband, wife, business owners together. Yeah, of course. Uh, so Alex and I met on Match. We are proud uh, match, uh, match made in heaven, right? <laughs> and there you go. Uh, we've got three daughters. Uh, so his daughter is 25, 24. <laughs> uh, she's up there. And then I've got a 22 and a 19 year old. And we're also grandparents. My 22 year old just had a, a baby boy. Um, awesome. So super excited about that. And then um, what was your other question? Uh, we have a, a, a child together. She is a hairy dog, uh, a Lhasa Apso mix that's laying down right at my feet. So that that's who we have together. There you go. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So kind of, kind of a blended family. And then when you guys told your daughters, that uh, you guys were going to start this business. What was the initial reaction? The initial reaction was what? Cleaning toilets, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we were fortunate enough to give them opportunities to, to work with us, right? To see what it's like to actually get down and provide a service, you know, service-based type of business. And um, one of them didn't like it. The youngest one, I mean, she, she, she still works with us today mm -hmm. and she gets down and everybody enjoys being around her. Um, she's very detailed, you know, and you can see the difference in personalities, right? Mm -hmm. Like the little one, like she's a go-getter. And then the older one, she's more like, no, nah, I'd rather be behind the office typing or doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. My, my, the oldest, um, she's not in the state. She lives in Virginia. Um, but she's doing pretty well for herself. You know, she, she's like the cheerleader, but from a distance, right? Like she sure. doesn't, she doesn't want to do anything with, with cleaning, but uh, she's a go-getter. She's, 
She's yeah. got a great career with corporate America and she's, you know, she's, she's a go-getter. So she's very, very driven. I, I love it because I know a lot of people too listening, have kids that are involved in the business, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, actually I know a ton of like second generation, like uh, owner operators now that mm-hmm. have grown up in the business because their parents have been running it for 15, 30 years. And it's mm-hmm. kind of cool to see how adult children can be, Become part of the business, whether that's from afar as a supporting cast or actually like in the day to day. Um, and I think it's good for people to hear that, um, mm-hmm. that are listening. Let's talk about the husband wife dynamic because your husband, wife, your mom, dad, and you're also business owners. There are mm-hmm. three different roles. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys talked about, you wear two different hats. It sounds like you probably learned that along the way. That's mm-hmm. kudos to you. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about where you guys bump heads those early days and how you guys kind of like uh, figured out that dynamic. Go ahead, Jessica. (laughs) So um, for for us, I think um, I want to say maybe about two and a half, maybe about two, two, two and a half years into the business. Um, So we started in 2018. And as you know, we were like in the beginning of the pandemic, like 2019, there were already rumors, right? And we were like, oh, that's all the way out there. That's not going to impact us being in Central Florida. Um, But at that point, um, the world opened up to other things. Like when we started to go virtual and going into quarantine, all of a sudden there were all these scholarships and, you know, pandemic funding for entrepreneurs to help them and all of that, right? So um, the, the, the main thing that really did it for me was I was selected as a scholarship uh, participant through the MBDA, which is, I believe they're now the FSMSDC, which is the Florida State Minority Supplier Diversity Corporation, something like that. And I received a grant that was about, it was a, for a program for about six months where it was female focused. Uh, for women that were in service-based business, such as our cleaning business. And I didn't think I was going to get selected. I'll be honest with you. Um, But, but I was, and that program just really opened my eyes to what we had in our hands. And one of the first things that I said to Alex was, I think we need to get an office. I don't think we're ready for that yet, but I think we need to get an office because, I mean, you should have seen my my house. I mean, our garage was full. We were having totally. team meetings at Starbucks and Panera or, you know, when we needed to take the team out, we would go to Chile, right? So it's like we're having a team meeting filled with food. It was it was just chaotic, I felt. And, um, and being part of this MBDA program really helped me understand the possibilities of our business. And wanting to get more involved, but also going back to the bumping heads with Alex, I started to feel like, oh my gosh, like, like the more I wanted to get involved, the more I wanted to pull away. So, um, somehow along the line, somebody gave Alex the book traction and he downloaded it on audible. We had the paper copy at home and he said, you really need to read that book. So he you know, of course I wound up reading it. We both take the assessment and the personality assessment for, for them came up that Alex was a high visionary and a high integrator, which made perfect sense because he was always stepping on my toes. And I was a very high integrator, very little vision. So that really helped us understand, okay, well, that's why we come across that way. And then do you remember the clubhouse days? Oh, yeah. Well, Gino Wickman happened to be in the clubhouse and I jumped on (laughs) to ask a question. And I said, how do you work with your spouse when you're both integrators, although he's a visionary and I'm not? And the first thing that Gino said to me was, first of all, your husband is a unicorn. He said that doesn't happen often for them to be both. But when you're the integrator, he has to be the visionary. Hmm. And that was one of the things that we started to see and started to execute, ex- execute on processes. And like, I feel like once he started to really get off, off my back and me telling him, why are you working on that when I'm working on that already? And kind of setting those boundaries around stay focused, stay focused on what you need to fit, stay focused on, forget about what I'm doing. I'm getting it done. I think that's when we really started to see growth in our business. Plus, putting key people. Our first hire was a human resource person. 
Mm. That was our first hire, like our first main hire. We had other hires for people on the field, but our first office key uh, employee was our human resources. And that really, I think, is what was really helping us balance all the things and not not bump heads as much. I was going to say, Alex, uh, I think that's interesting that you guys took the EOS test Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of that's how it kind of gave you some clear guidelines on what to do and where to go. Alex, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, kind of those early days of, of learning how to be husband and then also be co-owner with Jessica. Yeah, that those were, um, and we still have our, a few challenges now, but I've learned to stay, stay in my lane. Right. Uh, because she stresses that to me. Sometimes I mean, she'll, she'll see where, um, we have the opportunity to jump on this uh, on a great deal. Like, let's make it happen, right? And she sees me get like excited and anxious about it. And then she's like, wait, do we have this in place? Do we have this in place? No, we don't, but we'll figure that out when we get there, right? <laughs> uh, so there's definitely some challenges still, but I've learned to stay in my space and let her be, right? And then when she has questions or I have questions, we'll sit down and we'll chat about it, right? Um, I can definitely tell you that um, it's been challenging as 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 we're growing. You know, we're blessed, absolutely. You know, God has blessed us um, to the point where we're at. But we've noticed that in order to get to the to the next level, we can't do what we've been doing to get to this level, right? So that's the little challenging part. Um, and Jessica, I mean, recently she's more um, given us her all. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's been tremendous, tremendous, just motivational um, with the systems that she comes up with uh, SOPs. We're trying to make right now we're we're in our business where we're trying to set a standard that everyone understands, that everyone's on the same page. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those things that we made a change with with chemicals. Right. Um, we were at a point where we were just using gallons and we noticed, my gosh, we're spending a ton of money on chemicals. Mm-hmm. So I spoke to, um, a distri- a regional salesperson for the chemical that we use. And he says, well, Alex, we have this dispenser system. I said, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about it. He told me about it. I said, let's jump. And we put dispensers on, and the amount of money that we saved just by putting those dispensers in it's incredible it's incredible so just little things like that we're learning um listening to your podcast you know i've learned a ton of stuff i mean the last podcast that i heard um which was the same book that i read that opened my eyes to leadership was developing the leader within by john maxwell the last podcast i heard your guest um and i said oh my gosh that's eye-opening because the same book that i read to kind of change the mindset right and being uncomfortable in that space. So, um, yeah, it, it's definitely a learning. I feel, I tell Jessica all the time, I feel like we're on a roller coaster ride. Like you're going up and things are going great. And then the roller coaster just starts dropping down and you got to make it go back up. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, it's I, I think that's really well said. And John Maxwell is probably the most mentioned author among all of our guests on this show. Like mm-hmm. hands down, it's, it's Maxwell. Everyone references that. And I appreciate uh, that compliment, Alex. I, I want to ask if, uh, a few more kind of relational dynamics. And the reason I'm really going in on this is because I know how common this is in the space. And it's rare that I get a husband-wife duo together on the show. So I'm really taking advantage here. Um, how do you guys... And, and it, for the ones listening, if you don't run a business with your husband or wife, this question can still be relevant to you. How do you guys turn it off? Like when you go home, every business owner has the problem of turning it off. I would almost assume that it might even be amplified with people in your case, because you're not just turning it off solo. You have to turn it off from, oh, we're business owners. And now we got to go on date night, or now we got to go be with the kids or whatever the case is, like, what, what are the conversations when you're quote unquote, not at work? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lately, it's been, uh, the grandbaby, right? So, um, 
I'm guilty as charged. I mean, I would go home and tell Jessica, this is what happened. And this, and I'm trying to learn once I park that car and walk in the house, I need to leave that, you know, leave this over there. Right. Um, it, it's a little tough because it's your baby. Right. So you want, you want the baby. Now it just seems like we're starting to walk a little bit. Right. And you get super excited. And that's all you want to speak about. Um, but now we, we've been blessed with the grandbaby. So we get to talk a little bit more about him and not about work as much. And uh, just things that, you know, we like to uh, to do in the future as well. So yeah. Yeah, kind of turning it off as soon as the car gets parked and walk in the house. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I would add to that. I would say um, for me is boundaries, um, setting boundaries. You know, I, I'm also a business coach. And I, I help female entrepreneurs build their business. And there are times that, you know, when you love what you do, I, I love what I get to do, right? And I don't want to hear about who called out sick today. If we figured it out on the schedule, like, make it work, yes. right? So yeah. I think at one point, um, we were having a really hard time. I want to say probably about two years ago, um, we we're having a really hard time, really tough season for us of, you know, unplugging and um, waking up in the morning. And the first thing that we do is we have our quiet time, um, with the Lord. We like to read and, you know, just, we don't even turn on the TV. Um, and there were days that he would want to start talking about the business. And I would always tell him, you know, can, can we talk about this later? I'm not even clocked in yet, you know? So, um, so, and that was hard, you know, to do, but I think it was necessary. And I think, now um we tend to ask each other permission um i i that's something that we've been doing you know for for some time now of you know is it a good time to talk about this um do you have a minute are you reading something important you know and and just being able to respect each other's time and then um for me um it's my tone and i'm working on it <laughs> but i i just speak very you know, black and white and uh, not in a mean way, just like in a very direct way. And I, and I feel like sometimes I just need to soften it up. And I, and, and I do that more when, when I'm just not understanding something or if I need more facts or just to, you know, kind of bring him down the cloud sometimes, like I said, when he gets super excited and I'm like, well, we don't have the capacity for this. Right. So that's the visionary in him right there right. getting that excitement i'm 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 more of a visionary but what i heard from you jessica where i can relate is like mm -hmm. i always have to work on energy and tone with my yeah. spouse so she's technically not a business owner but like she's involved in all my businesses right mm -hmm. like because she's my wife right. and and she's a she's a high performer so like i'm always like like sponging on to her mm -hmm. everything that's going on and i've had i like what you said there um get the permission like, is this a good time to t discuss this? Mm -hmm. And I think anyone listening, whether you have a, a, a husband, wife as a partner, mm -hmm. you should probably actually ask that permission with a business partner in particular, right? Like, how do you communicate with your business partner? How do you communicate with your leadership team? Are you opting in for permission at that time? That's going to be a win-win for both of you guys to communicate. So I really like how you said that. Another thing I like to highlight what I hear so other people can hear it again is like you guys talk about greeting the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so overlooked. Commercial cleaning can be flipping chaos, right? Like you wake up, yeah, someone called in, you know, like a, a building didn't get locked, whatever the case may be. And it's like your phone could be blowing up at 645 in the morning and disregarding that. I want to talk about you two individually because I know I have two leaders on this call right now. Talk to me about some things you guys do as leaders and as business owners to personally grow. Jessica, I, I, mean, I know you do a lot if you're a business coach. And Alex, I just get the feeling you do a lot. I'd like to hear about how you guys kind of personally develop yourselves and how that benefits the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, um, uh, there's, there's really a couple of things that I focus on. You know, EOS um, and Traction, that's one of them. I have the book on Audible also. If I need to catch up on something, I do. And they just came out with a book called Process recently. And it happens to be that we're in the midst of developing SOPs and processes. So it was very, very timely for us. Um, another book that I 
focus on and been using for several years is the 12 week year. And these are books that mm. I, that I'm on repeat. I mean, I have the book on my counter. I have it, you know, on audible. I use it with my coaching clients. I've been using it uh, with exclusive and that's also been working well. Um, and then the last thing is profit first. Um, so if you, if you ask me what are key, key, um, system implementation, even though we kind of have made it our own, right, our own process and our own system, those have been the three things that have um, really moved the needle for for this for the purposes of our business. On the personal development side, I, I love reading. I love reading anything strategy, anything that motivates me. Um, the best book in the world is the Bible. <laughs> and, you know, we've been reading through our Bible, um, having a prayer journal. I journal technically every single day. I do miss days here and there, but, um, but I, I love to journal. I love to just be able to have a conversation with God because I think, um, the most important thing is that I know beyond, a, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that, that he is the reason why we are here today. There's just no way that we would have been able to do it without our spiritual health and our relationship with God. So that, that, that's for me. Amen to that. Alex, what about you, brother? Yeah, me me here. Jessica is the one that got me into um, leadership books. So she she actually recommended the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And I started reading that one. And I said, wow, this is pretty good. Got another book. I enjoyed the, the, the developing the leader within so much that I bought our team copies uh, mm. in Spanish because most of our team is, is in Spanish and uh, a few English copies and I gave it to them and kind of held them up to the challenge to to read it and kind of thinking outside the box, right? Uh, for me, leadership is, you can't go anywhere without leadership, without the proper leadership in place, right? How, how to lead people, how to how to show them that, you know, we're not just cleaning toilets. There's actually room for advancement. There's actually room to be a team lead, a, a regional manager, things like that, leading the correct way, right? Stepping out of our comfort zone. Um, and I've learned that uh, stepping out of your comfort zone, doing the uncomfortable thing through when we first started, when I was networking, I've never networked a day in my life, right? Getting out there and being in a room full of, you know, 30, 40 people and Hey, Alex, just, talk a little bit about you. I was nervous, man, but I did it. I overcame that. Right. And now you put me into a room. I can talk with anybody. Right. Um, but it's just, sometimes I feel like you, the mindset is what holds you back. Right. Whatever you think is what you're going to put out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've learned to overcome that and that's been <clears throat> tremendous, tremendous help. And what we do now with our team once a month, every second Thursday of the month, we have a team meeting. Um, at the office, we'll have lunch, we'll discuss different topics, wins, losses, where can we improve? And we always try to get the team involved in it, right? Maybe it's something that we brought on that they don't like, like right now, we're, we're trying to um, have a standard for the cleaning process straight across, right? So we sat down with them, uh, ask them what they like, what they dislike, what kind of changes they want, and listening to them, right? Because ultimately, they're the ones out there, right? And we, we're here, we always want to let them know that we're, we're here to support them, right? There's no judging, right? Um, this year, the beginning of this year, I told Jessica, I think it's a great idea because I, I always, I remember feeling great about doing vision boards, right? And just looking at what the year, what mm -hmm. I want to accomplish in that year. So this year, the, the, the first, the very first meeting of the year, we did vision boards for everybody and they loved it. They absolutely love yeah. it. So now it gives me the opportunity to reach out to them. Hey, uh, how's that vision board coming along? You know, kind of holding them accountable for it. So that's some of the things that we're trying here. That's amazing. You actually answered my question. I was going to ask organically. I was going to ask, how do you pour that leadership back on from you to your team? Mm -hmm. I love the vision boards. Actually, that's the first thing Angel, uh, who I, my partner, who I got introduced to Alex from, uh, he mentioned. Hey, Alex and, and his team did vision boards together. And I thought that was so cool. I think a lot of uh, cleaning owners sometimes take uh, leadership and like leadership activities for granted. They mm -hmm. think it's bullshit. And, mm -hmm. 
And then it reflects in quality control. It reflects in team camaraderie. And I can tell you, because we're in this unique driver's seat where we talk to all these companies coast to coast. We work with cleaning companies all over the country. The ones that win all have the biggest emphasis on leadership. It, it never fails 10 out of 10 times. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, should I be doing this? The answer is yes, you should be. And if you don't feel like you're doing it enough, do it more. And, and, and we're all guilty of, of never being perfect at it. I want to ask you guys kind of going more to the business side of things, the tacticalness. Why do you guys win contracts when you go to a walkthrough um, versus your competitor or someone else in the market? Like, why does someone say yes to you guys? For the most part, it's uh, it's me that goes out there and then Jessica kind of puts it all in place. But I always go into a new account, a new walkthrough. Um, first, I want to see if they do have another cleaning service, where are they failing? What would they like to see, right? Or for value, right? Um, how can we fix that situation for them? Um, and my thing is always starting a personal relationship right there, right from day one. Like, let, here's a little bit about me, tell me about you. And that usually, and usually you get the vibe, um, at least I've learned and I'm still learning. I'm not perfect at it. Um, but when I walk out that building, I get a good feeling we're going to win this or we're not going to win this, right? Uh, were they open to conversation? You know, uh, I ask about family, things like that. Starting... I think starting off the relationship on the right foot, it's probably about 90% of you winning that or not, right? Yeah. Um, so that's usually how I approach it uh, when I go to do a walkthrough. Um, and we've been fortunate now. We've been to plenty where we don't win. And usually it will come down to either price or something, right? But I have to learn, and this is something that uh, Bob and I are working on together, is... What are we selling? We're, are we selling the service, the value, the money? What What is it, right? So we got to kind of figure that out. And that's what we're trying to work on now, being able to provide the value to the customer. So, I, I love that. Jessica, do you have anything to add there? Or, yeah. I think or, or you're kind of more of the integrator. I, I am the integrator, but I think um, for the purposes of like the back office side, it's the, the, the response time to customers, the follow up process, mm -hmm. you know, the, well the quickness of a lead coming in. And, you know, before I think I was like tagging them inside of HubSpot, which is what we use. And now I don't. The last few times I take a screenshot, send it to my sales team and I'm like, hey, can, can somebody jump on this? And they immediately jump on it and they update it in HubSpot. So I think it's just really understanding our processes. Um having that follow-up and continuous touch point we do email marketing so every week our our customers hear from us um and then we try to have you know um things like during the holidays for example we send them a card you know we've we've done visits where we drop off cookies for the team um if the team goes to do a quick you know check-in they might bring donuts, you know, um, it's, you know, it's not always, and that should never be the expectation, but we definitely, we go above and beyond for our customers. Um, and we jump on every, every issue. It's not, it's not that it's always been pretty, right. We've had issues where it's like, Hey, you know, our, our, our hand soap wasn't filled. Right. So like <laughs> that kind of thing is like, Oh, wait a minute, but we weren't there for a week. So what happened to the hand soap in the last week? So we really go into problem resolution and then just, always mm. putting ourselves in the customer's shoes. And, and, you know, I always say it doesn't matter. They're paying for the service. We just have to get it done. So how do we make that right by the customer at all times? Man, I think that's really, I think those are some really good points you just made there. Uh, I talk about something called the three R's responsiveness, relationships, and then ultimately mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. And you guys each kind of mentioned all three of those R's. I think, uh, there's a big gap in responsiveness in the cleaning industry, which is tough, right? I mean, if there's a problem, especially when it comes to your cleaning and your facility, you need to be responsive. Mm -hmm. And the cleaning companies that win have the good relationships, mm -hmm. right? And and Alex, I'm gonna I'm gonna give some maybe unsolicited uh, 
thoughts here on what you said. What are you selling? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe the best cleaning companies sell an experience. Mm-hmm. I really do. I actually think like, you know, like I, I don't own a commercial cleaning company. I'm looking at my office now. I bet you eight out of 10 cleaners can come clean this office pretty decently. Right. Um, but I'm going to choose the one that I have the best relationship with that I trust that will be responsive when, when a problem arises and do they make it easy for me? Like, do they make it easy for me to sign the proposal to pay, to pay? Like it's, it's silly things like that that go so far. So anyone listening, like what's your experience with your client? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll end with this. So just a quick story. And I don't actually think I've ever told this on the show, which is kind of funny, Mm -hmm. but the, uh, I was told way back in the day, um, some humbling advice said, James, Hey, you have all the sauce to be successful as an entrepreneur. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant? I said, uh, you know what? I like, I like steak. Give me Texas roadhouse. I love, I love Texas roadhouse. He goes, great. You have all the ingredients, but what if I served you your favorite steak in a blender? Would you, would you drink it? I'm like, absolutely not. He goes, why? You love steak. It, it, it's the exact ingredients and all that. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It just feels weird. Like you're right logically, but something's off. He's like, yeah, because that's, that's you right now. You have the ingredients, but you don't have the experience. Mm. And I was like, gosh, dang, man, that's exactly mm. right. So when, when, when we're talking about cleaning and sales and, and being quality control and customer service, that story always comes back to me is like, Am I presenting an, a five-star steakhouse dinner or am I just providing the ingredients in a blender? So right. for whatever that's worth. <laughs> yeah, that was powerful. That was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so <clears throat> can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I'm i having some technical difficulties, not on your end, but on my end. So I got a few last questions here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start with Jessica. Mm-hmm. Jessica, I would love to hear what your kind of initiative is for the end of, from now through the end of the year. As mm-hmm. the integrator, obviously, as the business owner, the leader that you are, mm-hmm. what's kind of like your primary vision uh, for you and the company? Mm-hmm. Um from now to the end of the year? Um, so right now we are in a, in a great week. Um, those of you that use the 12 week year know that this week is the 13th week and the 13th week is usually done for implementation and planning for the next quarter. So I wish I could tell you what I plan on doing in December, but I, uh, so I, because I don't know, right. But what I can tell you is I know what we'll be focusing on in the upcoming quarter. Um, because, um, we've, we've already started the process and it's been in really honing into, um, government certifications. Um, we are a women owned, uh, minority business enterprise certified through the County. And we've been looking at different, um, opportunities through other areas, as well as the greater Orlando aviation authority, um, just to, just to put us out there. And this is not because these contracts th- or b- these certifications are going to get us business, but they're going to get us in the room to build relationships with key uh, decision makers. Um, and that, that's a big deal for us. So um, our focus is just to continue focusing on fine tuning some of our SOPs and processes just so that we are a well oiled machine as we continue to grow, um, because we know that what got us to the fifth year is not going to get us to the 10th. Um, but that will be specifically my focus. I, I love that. What's going to get you, what got you to the fifth year will not get you to the 10th, man. That is so true. What gets you to the first million won't get you to the fifth million and, and then the 10th million and, and so on and so forth. Alex, what about you, man? What's, what's kind of like your focus, your initiative and, and from, from now to the end of the quarter, end of the year, but what, what are some things you want to see happen with, with the company moving forward? Moving forward, I like to have the right people in place to help us get to that next level. And that's what I think that's a a, a constant thing that I'm working on personally. Like uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, we sat down with a, with someone who's been on our team about two and a half years and sat down with her and let her know, hey, we have this opportunity and we thought about you. Hmm. Right? And this is what it's going to look like. And um, she jumped on board. She was like, let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. So 
being able to, to coach someone like that because she's out on the field. She doesn't really know what goes on on the back end, right? Mm -hmm. But being able to, to show her things like that. So when we get to the point where, um, you know, we're growing, right? But now we have another partner on our side that she's part, you know, of this stuff. That for me, um, the end of the year, I mean, I, you know, we want to grow sales, right? Um, and um, we've been we've been blessed. Uh, we're, we're pretty steady um, right now. We like to get a little bit more, you know, and be able to give the opportunity to other people to help others, right? Hmm. Um, for me, right now is working on servant leadership too, right? Like working on myself to, so I can be a, I can be able to, to to guide and mentor other people. Um, so those, those are some goals that I have made for myself for this year. Well, I can tell you this by listening to you guys and, and kind of by learning a little bit more, I think you guys have, a, you guys are a power tandem and I believe that will be achieved. And, uh, Jessica, I've already learned a lot from you here. I'm like taking notes of like the 12 week year mm -hmm. and man, profit first. I read like the first five pages and I haven't completed it. Probably the second most mentioned book, by the way, on the show is profit mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. uh, behind any John Maxwell. Um, last but not least, my last question for both of you, if there's someone, uh, let's say they're in those first two years of business listening. Um, right now, and maybe maybe they're in business with their wife or their husband, who knows, but they're in those early days, you guys remember them. What piece of entrepreneurial, maybe industry, whatever type of advice would you give that person listening right now today? I would say stick to your guns. I, I'm a firm believer in um, consistency, being consistent in what you're doing leads to success. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. not giving up uh trust me there, there are plenty of days that that's it i'm done like i'm throwing in the towel right um but being consistent uh taking an approach where you're learning and you're, you're able to mentor other people you get a really good just inside i get goosebumps when i talk about that being able to to help somebody out of a situation that they they might be in right mm. um but for me is staying consistent to what you're doing what what the the overall picture is going to be like to you right staying consistent and then you'll be successful love it jessica what about you yeah for me um i would say in just looking back at our first two years um uh we were afraid to hire and our first employee um you know of just not knowing who are you giving your baby to right um, and that was, that was difficult. Um, but most importantly is hiring a coach or, or finding a mentor because there is no way that we can do this stuff by ourselves. And the reason why people say that entrepreneurship is lonely is because they're not connected to the right people because the first people that we assume are going to support us are going to be the first people that are going to say, you're walking away from what, what about all your education and all your experience and all the things and you're going to go do what, right? So, um, so hiring someone or even working with mentors or being in the right groups of like-minded individuals that are going to continue to help add and help you, uh, stay motivated. Well said, well said. And if you're an entrepreneur listening to this, especially maybe a female entrepreneur, connect with Jessica, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. she's a business coach. She, she's got some substance there. Um, we're going to link your guys' LinkedIn profiles and web company website, obviously, in the show notes here. Um, I do have to give just an add-on to what you just said, Jessica, and kind of a, almost a shameless plug here. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't agree more with what Jessica just said, surrounding yourself around like-minded people. I was told early on in business, stick with winners. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys are listening to this and you're looking for a cleaning event to go to, I hope I can uh, inspire Alex and Jessica to join us in Denver, Colorado in September. Mm -hmm. We're hosting our second cleaning profit event. And let me tell you, it's a, it's just a group of fellowship and collaboration and community industry driven. So we'll also put that link. We just opened up registration. Actually, Alex was the very first person I let know that that was open. It like opened the morning, Alex and I had our call. So mm -hmm. I, if you guys are looking for what Jessica just said, hopefully we can help provide some of that. Um, Alex, Jessica, where can people find you? Um, give a shout out to where 
uh, people can find you guys and we'll be sure to link everything uh, in the show notes. Well, I'm on LinkedIn under uh, Alexander Fortis. Uh, we do share some stuff there probably about two or three times a week, some posts and stuff like that. That's the best bet for me. Yeah. Yep. And our website is www.exclusivecleaningsvcs.com. And I'm also on LinkedIn, or you can find me at jessrosario.com. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, like I said, hope to see you two in Denver, but more than anything, I know people are going to get so much value from this, especially just with, with the awesome duo that you guys are and what you guys have created. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you so much you, for James. having us. James. Really appreciate you. Yeah. Absolutely.